Okay, so in this video, we are going to discuss Psalm chapter 1. Now, let's notice that Psalm 1 has been intentionally placed in the book of Psalms. It functions almost like an invitation, so that when the person, the reader, approaches Psalm 1, they're, they're supposed to ask the question, Am I blessed? Do I belong in this category of blessed or do I belong in the category of the wicked? So throughout the Psalter, you'll learn that uh, uh, people are divided into two categories, the blessed and the wicked. And the question is, well, which category are you in? So in Psalm 1, we see uh, the author describe who the blessed person is and who the wicked person is. He starts off with the blessed person. The blessed person is described first in a negative way. He does not do certain things. He does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. He does not stand in the way of sinners. And he does not sit in the seat of scoffers. But he does do something. So he doesn't do these things, but he does do something. Namely, his delight is set on the law of the Lord. And this causes him to meditate on God's law day and night. At this point, I want us to be very aware of how the author is describing a person who is in a right relationship with God. He describes him as blessed, which can be described as happy, a person who has joy. The person who is in right relationship with God has great joy. They are happy. They are blessed. So a great question you might ask is, why does the author describe the righteous person or the person who is in right relationship to God as blessed? That would be a good first question. The next good question we can ask is, what are you delighting in? Um, just ask the, the group, what are you delighting in? And of course, you'll get lots of great answers. And those who are honest might give us some not great answers. Um, but the blessed person the person who is overjoyed in their relationship with God, notice, isn't just somebody who does their duty, nor is it somebody who just obeys. Rather, it's somebody who delights. This highlights to us the importance of our affections, our joy. What we take joy in is extremely important. And what this text tells us is that the blessed person, the person who is in a right relationship with God, their delight is in God's law. And this causes them to meditate on God's law day and night. So another good question you can ask is, how do you know uh, what you're delighting in? <laughs> and the answer is, well, what, what are you doing all the time? If you're constantly turning to social media, well, you're delighting in social media. If you're delighting in your family, then you're constantly engaged with your family day and night. Uh, if you're delighting in the law of God, well, then you'll be meditating on it day and night. So the blessed person is somebody who delights in God's law. And then what the author does is he describes him with this image of a tree. Uh, basically, this tree is productive and it prospers. So the blessed person is somebody who has their affections in the right place. And that this leads them to meditate on God's law and to prosper in all that they do. Because notice the blessed person isn't doing this stuff. Rather, what he's doing is he is walking in God's law. So the author begins by talking to us about the blessed person. Then he transitions to talk to us about the wicked person. And the description is very brief. Why? Because like the image, uh, uh, chaff is blown away quickly. So the wicked are not like this. They're not prosperous. They don't have their joy sent on the law of God. Rather, they are driven away quickly. Therefore, what is the result of the wicked person? The result is they don't stand in the judgment or in the congregation of the righteous. So what this is saying is that you might be born as an Israelite, but if you're not having joy in God's law, you are driven away quickly, and you are not a part of God's people. And why? This is what the author tells to uh, explains to us at the very end. Why? Because the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. 
So because God knows who's righteous and who's wicked, he has the ability to prosper the blessed man and to drive away the wicked man quickly. So again, the main idea here is who, what does it mean to be blessed? What does it mean to be wicked? It, the, the, the psalm is inviting us to ask the question, what category do we stand in? Some good questions we could ask are, what are we delighting in? How do we know what we're delighting in? Why are our affections and our joys important to God? Why does God describe the righteous person as blessed? What is the end for the blessed man? And what is the end for the wicked? And how does this final verse comfort us? Those are great questions to ask as you lead your group in this study of Psalm 1.